What's up, my lovely friends? We have very exciting news today. We have, for the first time ever, ever in history, a peer-reviewed food pyramid for the low-carb and the keto lifestyle. And with that food pyramid, there has been brand new, brand spanking new research done specifically on the keto and the low-carb lifestyles to essentially debunk a bunch of the myths that we've had out there that have been there for years. Things like we need carbs, things that like are like red meat causes cancer, high cholesterol is going to cause heart disease. This article goes through all of that with peer reviewed research to give us the reality of what it is today. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to really simplify probably the top five most relevant uh, myths in this article. And I also think it's important to talk about like, why do we care about this? So that, that's what I wanna do really quickly first before I get into the five myths and then I'll get to that. Um, I'm also reading off of this document here because it's a lot of information. I'm not, definitely not gonna be able to remember all of it. So I'm gonna be kind of going back and forth, but this is huge, okay? Because we are in a world, a lot of people who are eating carnivore, or eating low carb or keto, there's a lot of pushback that we get from doctors or dietitians or peers saying that like that's gonna cause you to have heart disease or that's gonna cause cancer or that's not healthy. You need a balanced diet, whatever it is. So there's a lot of pushback and yet we're still experiencing benefits from doing these lifestyles, reducing anxiety, depression, losing weight, people reversing chronic disease, type two diabetes being reversed or lowering medications. It's like, it's conflicting information, right? So what this article is outlining is that the information, the research that had been done before, the framework for how the research was done on carnivore, excuse me, on keto and low carb lifestyle, I keep wanting to say carnivore, the research that was done on keto and a low carb lifestyle that was done years before was actually done with incorrect amounts of carbs consumed that was defined as low carb or keto, but it actually isn't. So all the research that's been done before was with people that were eating 37% of their carbs, of their, of their calories a day from carbs. And that's way more carbs than what is actually low carb or keto. And that's not going to get you the results that you and I have been experiencing from these lifestyles. So the entire framework of that research is false. But the other thing I want to say about this is that this research, again, first ever peer reviewed research. So this is done by people who are not in like an echo chamber of carnivore or keto. And like, they just want to think that they're right. I think that's so important. This is just like peers reviewing. What does it say? And these debunking of these myths is pretty powerful. There was no outside research uh, or no outside funding done for this research, which we know is very important because we know money talks, right? And you know what I mean? Sometimes if you have people funding your research, it can be skewed a certain direction. So none of that happened. And I really want to credit Nina, Nina Teicholz here. She is just a badass. She was actually hired by the new administration to reform the U.S. dietary guidelines for Americans and kind of change the entire design around our food system. Why that matters is so crucial. Why this matters is so crucial to understand. The U.S. Dietary Guidelines for Americans is what's given to us every five years. And, you know, a lot of the myths that we're going to talk about in this article have been in part what's defined those guidelines. The guidelines define our entire reality around food, whether we know it or not. The guidelines are given every five years and to the government, and then the government essentially puts those out there. And then any government agency has to follow those guidelines when it comes to food. So that's the military, that's the food that they're getting. Um, our education system, this is the food, the guidelines that are given to our education systems to give what you know our kids have at lunch or the snacks that they're given in school. This is what defines them as healthy or not. This is what's given to our elderly, you know, if they're in old people homes and the food that they're given is defined as healthy or not. Hospitals, the food that goes in the hospitals comes from these guidelines. Um, same with, you know, what your doctor would recommend you. So if you're going in there and you're struggling with, you know, your insulin is high or you have issues, you're developing potentially type two diabetes, the cure from that will be given to your doctor from these guidelines. Same with your dietitian. So literally, our realities are tied into all of this because the information, the advice, the feedback that we are given 
comes from these guidelines. And what we're seeing now, which this article outlines, is that when it comes to low carb and keto, almost all of that research was done with the incorrect framework. So now, because it's peer reviewed, they're setting it straight. Okay, so what I wanna go into now are these, um, these myths. And I'm gonna outline these really quickly here, one through five. The first one is that there has been this concern that there is a need for carbs, right? So you hear a lot of people say that we need to have a balanced diet, air quotes. And, you know, again, this research in this article done by all these different researchers from all walks of life was looking at people who were consuming a keto lifestyle, which in this article was 10% uh, of their daily calorie intake came from carbs or less. So that's like 20 to 50 grams of carbs a day or low carb, which would be 20 to 20, 25 to 26% of somebody's daily intake of uh, calories came from carbs. That is low carb. So that would be 20 to 25% or 130 grams of carbs maximum a day, way different than 37%. So what they found when it comes to a need for carbs in a day is that actually in doing their research, it showed that those who suffer from chronic diseases or type two diabetes or are even obese are often what are called what is called carbohydrate intolerant and actually cannot consume the same range of foods as those who are healthy metabolically. So it's like kind of the example of somebody's gluten intolerant. You know that person is cannot their body cannot tolerate as much gluten, so they eat um, gluten free things, right? Like gluten free bread, gluten free cookies, whatever. They just simply cannot tolerate as much gluten as you or I can. So for that person, they eat less gluten. The argument here is that from their research, there are some people who are just metabolically not healthy and they cannot eat as many carbs as you or me. So they should eat fewer carbs to then become metabolically healthy. It's a, it's a like person by person thing and it doesn't necessarily need to be a balanced diet blanket approach for everybody. Um, so what they actually found was that the National Academies of Sciences uh, also concluded in 2005, this is a while ago, in reports that the actual essential amount of carbs needed, essential amount of carbs needed is zero. <laughs> so they're saying that the essential amount for human beings to have of carbs a day is zero. And their scientific um, kind of like reason behind this is what's called glucogenesis. So I'm going to read the actual definition for that for those of you that don't know what it is. But glucogenesis is the glycogen, which is like sugar that's previously, sto previously stored in the liver is broken down into glucose, sugar in the body, and then dispersed throughout the body. So glucogenesis can take care of creating the sugars that's needed for our eyesight and our brain and all of that. The uh, National Academies of Sciences concluded that there is actually zero need for carbs for somebody who's metabolically healthy. And, you know, again, this is a person by person approach. We don't necessarily need to have a balanced diet. <laughs> so that's wild because that's the first time ever that that's been validated. Let's move to um, myth number two, which they address in this article, which is red meat causes cancer and heart disease. Um, so this is a quick one, but according to this article, most of all the reviews that they found, because remember, they went back and looked at all of the research, all of the data. They found that most reviews um, who are looking into this, who use the, quote, gold standard methodology approach, which is a way of doing scientific research, actually concluded that there is very little quality ev evidence to justify health concerns about red meat being cancerous at all or causing heart disease. So all that is to say is that in this research done by all the peer reviewed people, they went back to look at the data that's saying, you know, red meat causes cancer and heart disease. And they're saying, actually, that data is pretty bad. Like, it's actually not accurate. We can't, we can't conclusively say that that's true. So all of that information that we've been hearing about red meat causes cancer and heart disease is not actually founded in real science is what this article is saying. This is huge. This is huge because you'll hear this from doctors and dietitians and people all over the place. It's not that they're bad people. The information that they were given is flawed. And again, that's what this information is saying from all these different experts. Let's move to myth number three. What causes heart disease? So a lot of times the question has been, or the, the thought has been saturated fats, 
which we knew came about in the 50s, and then also uh, increased LDL cholesterol. So let's start with the research on saturated fats. Um, it looks like there was what, what they found in their research was for people that had low carb diets. So again, that would be 25 or 26 percent of their daily calories came from carbs or less. In this new research, it, it when they actually uh, had a high amount of fat intake, so like they did two to three times the recommended amount of animal fat, they had zero effect or even decreased the amount of sat saturated fatty acids in the blood. And other findings show that there was actually no beneficial effect of reducing animal facts, um, which confirmed this was confirmed apparently in 24 systematic reviews in clinical trials. So basically the increase of animal fat was good and decreasing it was not helpful. And then also it went into the, uh, going into the LDL cholesterol thing. It actually, in their research, these people doing this research on low carb and keto, it showed that lean people with a, a low BMI actually saw the LDL rise happened when they were eating that way. Um, but there was absolutely no plaque buildup in doing this research for five years. So yes, they were eating low carb. Yes, they were eating high um, animal fat. And yes, their uh, LDL did rise, but that didn't equate to plaque buildup, which is the concern with high increased cholesterol is that it's going to increase the plaque buildup. And they're saying they saw none of that for people that had this, um, you know, low BMI and all that. They also found uh, in a large clinical trial on the keto, on people doing keto, found that there were 20, like they were measuring 20 heart disease like factors from doing this. So people that would be likely to get heart disease. And of those 20 of those 20 factors of the people that were on the keto lifestyle, 17 of those factors actually improved <laughs> doing keto. So you, you know, the argument has been like, if you get, if you do keto, you're going to have heart disease and it's going to be all these issues, um, increased LDL cholesterol is going to be bad. In fact, 17 of the 20 improved. So the opposite ha happened. And then um, two were unchanged, so neutral change. And then there was one on there, and it was basically like so minor, the change, that it was pretty much irrelevant. So everything got better on keto, and that's exactly the opposite of what people have been saying uh, would cause heart disease. So that's rather interesting. And, and the final thing, in another low, they did another low carb intervention that did not restrict saturated fat intake. So high, high, high fat, and it looks like the cardiovascular risk decreased by almost half. So in these research studies, again, present day, not this thirty-seven percent of your calorie intake coming from carbs. This is ten percent or twenty-five percent what it should be. They're seeing that people who had those kinds of lifestyles with very high fat intake actually reduce their cardiovascular resist risk by almost half. That's wild. <laughs> totally turns it around. I want to go to the last two here. This is going to be increased mortality, mortality from a low carb diet. So this is essentially kind of like what I was saying before. Experts uh, who have believed this did believe this with such conviction because so much of the framing of the research around keto and low carb was done with it under the framework of 37% intake of carbs. Now, that's a huge difference. When you have that increase of carb intake, you are going to see that's going to change the results quite a bit, and it's not low carb or keto. So in fact, the increased mortality rate is false, is what these researchers are saying, because that's incorrect data that they're basing it off of. Um, so that's a huge myth right there. The high mortality rate cannot be validated with that data because the data framework was incorrect. And let's go to the last, the fifth myth that I want to dispel here from this article. Just had a, a like a feather blow off my nose. That's been there the whole time. Sorry about that. Um, let's go into type two diabetes. So so many people struggle with type two diabetes. Essentially, from this research. Um, Obviously, clinicians have claimed for years that type 2 diabetes cannot be reserved, uh, reversed. But in fact, the ADA, which is the American Diabetes Association, is now saying that it, remission is possible. They um, essentially did a clinical trial with 238 people with type 2 diabetes for eight years and found that more than 50% of those people reversed disease on a keto diet and most of them, if literally most, if not all of them, eliminated all medications in 10 weeks. In 10 weeks, dude. 
Like, that's crazy. When they're, when people are saying you cannot reverse this, and now we're seeing with this trial of 238 people, half of them reversed it, and then all of them almost got off of t- their medications in 10 weeks. That's wild. The The goal here is that if you, in, if you reduce the carb intake, it has the most evidence of glycemic control. So obviously insulin is what people want to control. But when you reduce carbs, obviously you reduce spikes in your insulin levels. That's going to make it so you're going to need less insulin. You're not going to need to take as many insulin slots. It'll, it'll control your, your blood sugar levels. That's going to help reverse type 2 diabetes. It's kind of obvious if you ask me. That's what this is validating. So that is the fifth and the final piece to this, this myth that is coming in this article. Again, this is huge because again, this this is the framework of how we live our lives. Everybody goes to work and then everybody goes to their doctor and asks their doctor for their medication input and what they should have. And the doctor is giving them information that they get from these nutrition guidelines. They're not bad people, but this information All of this that I just shared with you is brand spank new data that is coming out from the direction of the new administration, essentially saying, no, we got to get the real information out there. And this is that. So I'm going to attach the link below so that you, if you want to read this, you can look into it. Again, here is the brand spank new, beautiful um, keto and low carb food pyramid. I highly recommend you look into this. It's not going to have all of the stuff on there, the Cheerios or whatever, the you know, all the grains and all that. It's, it's very different looking, very different looking. And this is brand new. So this, this could have the potential to completely change and reimagine our entire food system. And it's also validating for people who are on carnivore or meat-based who are like, yeah, I'm seeing these amazing changes in my, my physical health, my mental health, my body feels better. I'm reducing inflammation. It's like, yeah, because you're getting metabolically healthy. And this new research is validating so much of why for people out there and dispelling so much of these myths out there. So, you know, it's interesting, you guys, I just find when I do this kind of stuff, I just find we live in such an interesting reality. We're in such a wild time right now where so much new data is coming out. The dogma is being dispelled in so many parts of the world, just like with food, with how our day-to-day lives should be, with a healthcare system, with you know how to achieve health, it's just the power of um, eating real food, like food from the earth and not just all this ultra processed crap that's just killing us. We've been you know, programmed to believe that it is real food, like all these things are shifting and changing. And this is such a huge step in that direction to reinventing our realities. So anyways, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Shout out to Nina Teicholz for creating this and her team for making moves on this. We are uh, reimagining the entire system. And I think I think the world is kind of waking up. So please share this with people out there. Yeah, subscribe if you're into this kind of stuff. I talk about all things, human optimization, exploration, life hacks, all the new science, We are reinventing our realities here, and this is a huge step in that direction. direction. So, all right, y'all, I'm going to go. I'm going to lose my voice here if I keep talking. (laughs) I'll see you on the next one. See ya.